Good morning. Good morning. How are you all feeling? This is the last day. Are you excited? Well, I'm happy to hear that because I know that I am super, super excited to be here with you today. Um, thank you so much to Zafigo for bringing me here. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my favorite subject, me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, building a career in travel. So. I need to give you a little bit of background about myself. I originally grew up in Hawaii in a small town called Kailua on the east side of Oahu, and I was very much an island girl. So for me, the world did not exist past a two-hour radius that I could drive around. Um, I also am a child with several siblings. I have six brothers and two sisters. So there was no money <laughs> to travel. So for me, traveling was always a pipe dream. It was something that I was really, really hoping to do at some point in my life. I just didn't know when that was going to be. Um, and through a series of events, I am thrilled to be with you here today uh, and tell you exactly how that happened for me. It's a pretty cool story. So how I built a business and travel. How many of you like to travel? How many of you would like to travel more? How many of you would like to make money while you travel? Bingo, then I'm talking to the right crowd, right? So everybody wants to learn how to do this, and there are lots and lots of different ways to do this. I was talking a little bit yesterday about different types of travel, how there's really no one right formula. Um, and some of you were sharing stories with me at lunch about what you're hoping to do next, and I'm really just hoping to inspire you with the story of how I got here today. So uh, my name is Kelly Lewis. I am what you call a serial entrepreneur meaning I come up with businesses every other day. <laughs> every time I take a shower, I come up with a new business idea. It's just the ones that I choose to act on um, that I really pour my energy into. So my first project was a company called Go Girl Guides, which publishes travel guidebooks for women. Um, we've released print and eBooks on Mexico, Thailand, Argentina, London, New York. We just released a small book on 50 essential items for female travelers, which is full of my favorite goodies, things that I take with me when I travel carry-on only, which is the only way that I travel now, because I don't have time to lose my bag. <laughs> and I don't trust airlines. So, um, so yeah, and then that was seven years ago. Five years ago, I created a company called Women's Travel Fest, which is uh, similar to this. It's a conference that celebrates and encourages women to travel, and then most recently was Damesley. So uh, I, I am super, super honored to have come as far as I have, but before any of this, I was a news and arts reporter. So I got my background in journalism. Uh, and yeah, and I, I wanted to travel. I didn't know how. I actually wasn't able to start traveling until I was 22, until I graduated university. So I uh, have packed a lot in, 70 countries in nine years. Um, and. And yeah, and now I have the luxury of being able to travel all over the world, talking to other women about how to do the same. Uh, for me, it started with a dream. And I don't mean like a dream as in an aspiration. I mean a literal in the middle of the night, wake you up from your sleep dream. And I had a dream that I was staring at a guidebook for women. And in my dream, I was going, you're so dumb. This is totally your calling, but you didn't do it. Somebody else did it. It's already been done. And in my, in my head, it was, it was me saying to myself, this is what you're, supposed, this is what you're made for. You know? But I didn't realize that. Uh, and I also didn't remember the dream until the middle of the next day when I was working as an arts reporter for a magazine um, for a company that I really despised. <laughs> I hated my job. Oh my God, I hated it. I had fluorescent lights over my head. I had this tyrannical 70-year-old boss who would come in and bellow about making popcorn and making the office smell, and I hated it. I hated it. I felt suffocated. Then I was working, 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 and then traveling, and then coming back to the same job, working, 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 traveling, with no kind of goal there. Um, but subconsciously, as I was traveling, I started to notice all the different ways in which women's travel is different from men's travel. And I started to say, hey, how come nobody's telling me that bus stations in Argentina are a little bit dangerous? Or how come nobody's telling me that it's really difficult to find tampons in Buenos Aires? 
right? <laughs> so since then, I've become the woman that talks about tampons. <laughs> That's how my business started. Um, but in the next day, in, when I was sitting there in my office, I remembered this dream, and it hit me like, you know, in, in cartoons, when a coyote gets hit by an anvil and he like falls back, he gets blasted back. That's how it felt for me. And I was sitting there, and I thought, somebody's already done this. There's no way it's possible. It's 2010. And I started Googling, and no one had done it. No one, had, no one was making guidebooks for women. So three months later, right then and there, I decided I was going to be in Thailand writing our first guidebook. And three months later, I was. So it was a small dream that inspired me to take action until I realized I didn't have any money. Right? So, oopsies, there's no money to make this happen. What I had was $1,800. Of that $1,800, I poured $1,200 into web design, which I strongly recommend doing if you have an idea from the jump. Um, $300 of that came to creating a company, which I knew nothing about. I literally was just blindly doing this. 300 of that went to advertising. I started joining different communities of women who I knew were doing cool things. In 2010, the travel blogging industry was kind of just forming. There were some really heavy hitters and there were some newbies, but everyone was sort of on an even playing field. We didn't really know how the internet was going to go. Um, so at that point in time, I started first a blog called Travel Bug Juice. <laughs> so dorky. Um, <laughs> just mostly for my mom, right? And, and at that point, I was starting to get some traction on Travel Bug Juice and meeting other bloggers. Uh, and then I decided to revamp that website, and I found these designers that I loved out of New Orleans. They were, they were famous for making travel blogs really pretty. So I called them, and I said, hey, I have this new idea for a company called Go Girl Guides, and can you design it for me? And they really put it all together. So they made it come to life for me. Um, and that was really how I started. And so from there, I started asking around in that community, would anyone like to write for us? I don't have any money, but maybe we can put something together. You know, maybe we can make this work. Um, and I was amazed by how many women were willing to help and willing to lend their voices and excited about a new idea of something that supports women in a new way. Um, and so that's how the beginning days of Go Girl Guide started. So if you have a new idea, something that hits you in the head or just keeps nagging you in the back of your head that you know you want to do, all of us have them, right? People come up to me all the time and they say, oh, I have this great idea. And I say, awesome, what are you doing about it? Nothing. So <laughs> don't be that person, you know? Start doing stuff about it. If you have an idea, talk to other people you think can help get it off the ground or start to figure out how to make websites. Nowadays, there are millions of free website templates. You don't even need a designer. If you want to come out strong out the gate, though, I highly recommend getting a web designer. Um, and personally, just when I started, it was $1,200. Now I've paid as much as $5,000 for a website. But you can keep things within that range and start really, really solidly. So I think there's kind of a misperception that starting businesses means you have to have a lot of money, right? You don't. You just have to have the gumption to do it and the will to be able to suffer a little bit until it gets going, um, which I do. <laughs> so, um, but it's really simple to get going, you know? So first, you just have to get clear on what it is you want. And there's lots of different niches within the travel industry, which is my focus. So originally, I was talking about reporting for news and arts, which is very, very different. Once I started traveling, I started realizing all the different ways in which travel can be talked about, and that really opened my eyes to a new career. So within the travel industry, which I decided I wanted to be my focus, there's lots of different niches. There's women's travel, there's budget travel, there's family travel, there's volunteerism. You know, there's lots of different types of travel within that industry. So I think, you know, you just have to get clear on which niche fits you best, you know, and um, from there, find out what sector of the industry you want to be in. There's, there's the media side, which I'm in, which is writing, blogging, photography. There's also other aspects. There's hospitality. There's working for cruise ships, which I've done before. I actually started working for a company called Semester at Sea maybe six years ago when Go Girl was a baby. And uh, I got to sail around the world with them. It's a study abroad program. I got to sail around the world writing about their ship. Um, and that was great with my boyfriend who coincidentally hated traveling. Fun fact. Found that out on that trip. <laughs> 
so you know, you find out which niche is going to get you there. So at this point now in the travel industry, it's huge, right? There's thousands of bloggers. Everyone wants to get a piece of it, and there's plenty to go around. But the best way to get to the top of the travel industry, or any industry really, is to find yourself a niche. Figure out which, which area you can really excel in. And then you got to find money, right? So I was really, really creative with finding money when I first started. I asked my friends. They were like, sorry. I asked my family, and they're like, sorry. <laughs> I had fundraisers at bars that I knew bartenders at, you know, and they would donate like half the pot to me. I uh, contacted local media. I pitched my ideas around, and I was able to, to get some recognition, which gave me some funding. But there's also other creative ways of funding. We did a Kickstarter campaign once for our Argentina guidebook. It's a lot of work. But it's worth it, you know, if you can get funding. Um, there's Indiegogo, which I'm sure you've heard of. But there's also Fund My Travel, which you can use to fund personal trips for people who really love you. Or if you have a birthday coming up, you can start an account there and say, hey, mom, I'd really like to go to Malaysia for my birthday or X, Y, and Z. There's also Rocket Hub. Uh, there's GoFundMe. And there's Classy.org, which is great for nonprofit ideas, if you have an idea in the nonprofit or education sector. The thing is, you have to be comfortable with asking for what it is you want, you know? And sometimes, as women, it's uncomfortable to talk and ask about money. It feels like a taboo. It feels like something that we're not allowed to do. Um, but that's how you get to where you need to go, right? So you just have to be OK with accepting that you need that. Um, step two is to start building yourself a brand. Once you've decided which niche you want to be in, you have to start rounding it out. And that means doing the work. Um, it's really easy to have an idea. It's great if you're inspired enough to buy a domain name right then and there and to start your social handles. That's always what I do when I start businesses, is like start first, figure out later. Um, but really what you have to do is start figuring out how to do the work. Do you need blog content? Can you do that yourself? Is that something you need to outsource? Uh, do you need to find a designer? If so, I can connect you to mine. Do you need to trademark? I would strongly recommend trademarking. I actually tattooed the logo of my company on my arm before I even trademarked it. Like, how dumb is that? You know, I'm doing it, I did it all backwards so that you can learn how to do it the right way. <laughs> and then you just have to start creating. It's really just about putting one word in front of the other, figuring out what the path is, and defining what it is, what is success to you. So for me, I wanted to not only travel around the world and be paid to do it, I wanted to be a known expert in this industry. I wanted to be one of the top women promoting other women to travel the world, and I am. And so uh, seven years later, it's, it was the best thing I ever did was starting this company. So step three, once you get going on things, once you've created a brand, you've started you know, putting your foot in the door and meeting people, then you have to start banging on doors and join communities. Um, there's a lot of great travel industry communities. So if you're interested in being in this industry, I would strongly recommend looking into Travel Massive. They have groups all over the world. They do meetups all over the world, and it's only for professionals in the travel industry. So I've gotten a lot of great connections from Travel Massive events, um, and which has resulted in a lot of great press and a lot of great networking opportunities. Um, there's also Girls Love Travel. Some of you might have heard of that. It's on Facebook. They have 420,000 members of women who love travel and who support each other in their endeavors. There's Zafigo, which we're standing in right now. You know, there's also Women's Travel Fest, my conference. There's couch surfing, which you really don't have to have a stranger on your couch to be a part of the community. You can also meet up with other entrepreneurs. Um, you can use it as a form of meetup.com, essentially. Um, there's Creative Mornings. Creative Mornings is similar to Travel Massive in that it's across the world. They have different chapters, uh, although they host early morning events usually on a Friday, a Thursday or Friday before work, and you get free coffee and a speaker who talks about how they built their brand and how to network. So you really get to meet women entrepreneurs who are excited about doing the same type of work. Um, and then there's Media Bistro. If you're into journalism, if you want to land more jobs writing, Media Bistro is a great place to start. I also used to use Craigslist, but I tend to find media jobs now through either journalismjobs.com or Media Bistro. So at the end of the day, you get what you focus on. And I think that's been the biggest lesson for me, is that maybe what you're focused on is not necessarily... Um, not necessarily 
creating millions of dollars, right? Maybe what your focus is is creating millions of relationships. For me, I think creating relationships is the most important part of building a brand because in any industry, who you know is everything. So coming to conferences, being out there, you know, sending blind emails all the time. These are things that I do, but you have to constantly focus on what the big picture is because when you're just starting out, it's really easy to get stumbled on any sort of stumbling blocks that come your way and it's really easy to get discouraged and feel like your voice isn't loud enough. Um, I promise you, if you keep working at a goal, um, if it's traveling the world and making money doing that, you can, you can find a way to do that. There are thousands of people who I know uh, who do the same thing. So really what it comes down to is hustling. You know, How much are you willing to hustle? I worked three jobs when I first started Go Girl. I was working as a hostess in a restaurant. I was working for a magazine. I was freelancing. Oh, and I was also bartending. So, you know, I really, you, I had to just kind of sacrifice. I ate a lot of beans and rice. <laughs> a lot of beans and rice. Um, but it's worth it, right? Because in the end result, I get to see the world and now I get to meet women like you. Um, so you have to, I think, define why do you want to do this work? Why do you want it to work? Who will your work help? You know, really visualize who is the person, give her a name. Where does she come from? Where is she going? How can your work help her? And who can help you? And I think this is a key point, you know. Much as we're nervous about talking about money, we're nervous about asking for help. But finding mentors is a key part of moving up in the travel industry. Um, I'm happy to be any mentor, and I'm really happy that I have some incredible mentors who've helped me along the way, women like Pauline Fromer, uh, of Fromer's Guidebooks and Samantha Brown from the Travel Channel. These are women that I consider friends of mine and I really reach out to um, when I need it. So I would encourage you to think high, you know, to find who are the women that you look up to? How can you get to that next level? Um, and what is it going to take to see more of the world and how, and how you want to see it? I was doing an interview yesterday after the panel and the reporter was asking me, do you always stay in hostels? Do you, know, do you always travel on a budget? And I was thinking like, no. <laughs> I used to, you know, but what I really set for myself was a goal to kind of be able to have a little more flexibility in my budget, that I didn't have to stay in a hostel if I didn't want to. Not that they're bad, there are some wonderful hostels around the world, but I had the freedom to choose. Um, and so I think really the, it comes down to getting clarity on what you want within the industry. Um, so, I have run out of time, just about, but I have plenty of time to come and speak with you after the fact. If you have an idea for a business, if you think that um, you, know, you might need some mentorship in, in getting to the next level of where you are, I'm happy to speak with you uh, during lunch or after this presentation. Um, I think the biggest thing to remember, though, is what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as who you become by achieving your goals, you know? What is seeing the world to you? And how does that make you feel? And how can you take that and radiate it onto other people, right? Because at the end of the day, our goal as travelers is to serve as many ambassadors of our countries, of where we are, right? So we have to promote the good, and we have to, we have to see as much as we can, because that's how we change stereotypes, that's how we change minds. Um, so I really, really encourage you to go out there and chase your goals. And if it's working in the travel industry, come on in. It's a nice pool. <laughs> so thank you very much.